Let's call the order. First order of business the minutes of June seventh. Motion on the minutes. I second. Wow, that was quick. Much different than Zoom, huh? <laughs> All not in the not, same room, there's no, no delay. Now, now, now we get to hear you, too. <laughs> that's right. Maybe that's not so good. Well, okay. <laughs> I have a motion made and seconded to accept the minutes as presented on June 7th. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Jeff, three zero. Next up, we have the appointment of part-time officers. Brendan, do you want to give the introductions, please? Good evening. Uh, Chief Dimitropoulos uh, submitted a letter recommending the appointments of two candidates. One candidate is present, Taylor Dupree, and the second candidate is Daniel Fernandez. Who I believe is on the phone. Dan, are you there? Uh, yes, I can just hear you. Okay, very good. He's so, in the box? He is. He's sneaky. No. Wow. Uh, so, two candidates. Uh, Mr. Fernandez has been in law enforcement uh, in a full-time capacity for over 10 years. He uh, started in the uh, town of Hadley and then transferred over a few years ago to the town of Shootsbury, where he actually climbed up the ladder very rapidly and for the last three years uh, was the town's police chief. Uh, Mr. Fernandez uh, retired a few, year, a few months ago to pursue a uh, avenue in another other area, but he would still like to stay in law enforcement in a part-time capacity, so he is one of the recommendations. Ms. Dupree, I think she just uh, said a few moments ago, she uh, just uh, graduated from the Reserve Intermittent uh, Academy uh, earlier this year. Uh, she's currently working part-time in the Shootsbury Police Department as a part-time officer. Uh, but she's looking to actually get in law enforcement, hopefully full-time, and one of her aspirations is to become police chief. Um, so her training will take a little bit longer. Um, I think uh, we both make a great fit with the department. Great. Nice to meet you both. Nice to meet you. Questions? David? Mm, not the second. Tristel, you I, have any questions? I have no questions. The, the only thing I can say is that it, I believe being a part-time officer is one of the most difficult things there is in, in police work. One, Brendan and other full-time officers have the advantage that they can drive around, they get to know that there's a, a blue car in this yard every time, you know, every night, uh, and, and they get to know the peoples also. So it's much more difficult for part-timers to get to know. I don't think it has to be that way, but it, unfortunately it is that way. I would just recommend that um, be approachable, don't be afraid to roll down the window, wave hi to the people in the community, uh, and get out of the cruiser once in a while. I, I think those are critical aspects of policing, especially in a, a small town. Um, and you know, you notice our cruisers are black and white. Um, I, I understand why police departments have motorcycles and, and horses. It's not, I mean, there, there are some, the, Biggest reason is if for community policing. It seems that people are much more willing to come up to a police officer on a motorcycle than a cruiser. Don't ask me why, but it's, that's, that, it's been studied, it's been showed over and over again. So make yourself approachable um, and don't, don't be adverse to waving. You see somebody and, and roll the windows down. Right, Chief? Yeah. What's that? I said, you've been a good chief in Shootsbury. Well, I appreciate that. I'm not a chief anymore, though. So <laughs> just excited to start working part time. Yeah, I, th I think, though, once you're a chief, you're always a chief, though. Oh, oh, geez. I got to carry that with me forever, huh? <laughs> I, well, the, you, that stigma will be on you forever. Yes, sir. OK. <laughs> um, any other? Jeffrey, any comments? Um, I just wanted to ask, this is to uh, fill vacant positions, it's not, we're not adding, they're not new positions, right? No, I mean, we used to have as many as 10 or even 11 part-time officers. We currently have six. And in filling some of the shifts, especially in the summertime, is, is sometimes tough when you have 20, 25 shifts that need to be filled in one month. Um, so we, we just feel that having two additional part-time officers will help to, to fill any voids. 
I liked I liked the proposal you brought forward last last week or last meeting, Jeff, where no police vacations during summer months. I like that. We're supposed to vote on that tonight, aren't we? Yeah. What do you think? <clears throat> Did he tell you that? Three more years. Four more years, please. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> four more. Oh, wait, four more years. Okay. All right, so uh, without any other questions, and so this is beginning now until July 1st, or does it start at July 1st? Uh, I think there would be two motions, or you can do a combined motion now until July 1st, and then July 1st for the regular appointment, annual appointment. So we're just trying to get them on the books now? Yes. Right. Or we'd have them in with the, all the regular ones anyway when we do that, right? Uh, not these two. They, they weren't in the. Oh, we already did the, those. Yeah, there. we already That's did right. the annual. All right. What, yep. What's the motion you have there, Jeffrey? Do you have the motion? Uh, a motion to appoint uh, for the rest of fiscal year 21 and fiscal year 22. Uh, motion. I second. Um, so how does this how does this deal with the the mm -hmm. uh, the contract with like the. Uh, uh, Uniform allowance, et cetera. Is that included? Um, it, it would be. Or is it, or is it prorated? Under the, it would be under the first, yep. uh, the, the expiring contract that expires June 30th yep. for, for the new hires. And then, but I don't, the uniform allowance did change. I don't think the vest, I think that was in the last one. So that would apply. Okay. Can I use that word on that? I believe the contract stipulates for part timers they have to work at least 100 hours from June 3rd, or July 1st to June 30th mm -hmm. in order to get their clothing on. So these two officers would unfortunately have to wait until next next year. Year, next year to yeah. earn their clothing on. Thank you. Okay. That's all right. We have a motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? Hearing no other discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Jeffrey three zero. Congratulations, Taylor. Welcome aboard. Congratulations, Chief. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> Look forward to meeting you. Thanks. Okay. Have a good night. Right. Brendan. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Thank see you around. We'll see you guys, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Brendan. Thank you. Good seeing you too, Brendan. All right. Stay safe, guys. Thank you. Thank you. One day alcohol license, Jeff? Yes, we received uh, an application for a one day alcohol license on July 17th to have a wedding reception at the Sunderland Town Park. And there were um, no concerns by uh, police or fire or board of health. So, so if I'm not mistaken, alcohol now they would have to have insurance for that. Uh, yep, they do have a liquor liability insurance. Okay. Do we have to? Do we have to have a? The ABCC doesn't get involved with that. That's just the one day. We're we're all set with that, right? Yep. Okay. Crystal, questions. David? No. Run through the stuff. So I had to do these good before. <laughs> All right. Motion? Uh, motion to accept one day liquor license. I second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded to uh, support a one day liquor license for July 17th. Correct. Any further discussion? Not hear any further discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Jeff. Financial update. Yes, so it uh, came to our attention that there were some journal entries that were requested um, by the school at the end of last fiscal year um, that were never entered into the system uh, by the accountant. And so our free cash was overestimated um, by about $89,000. Um, so what would happen is this year free cash would be reduced by that amount. Fortunately, there were some other, uh, accounting, uh, 
miscues, and there was about eighty-seven thousand dollars that should have been posted um, that weren't. There was one. I, I believe it was annual town meeting of 2018. There was an article for about 57,000 or 65,000 that did not pass um, to transfer free cash to stabilization. I believe that that the accountant thought that it had passed and moved that money. So that's going to come back to free cash. There were a couple others. So the net like two loss was about two thousand okay. dollars to free cash. Um, so obviously the fact that. The books were in pristine order is concerning, but it's not uh, nearly as dire as I had thought when I when I asked to put this on the agenda. So that's the problem. That's good. We don't have to scramble to so, eighty nine thousand. So the town of Sunderland utilizes the accounting services of the Franklin Council Regional Governments FERCOG. Um, so have you had a conversation with them about? missing that yet i have not had an opportunity but that i need to follow up with them on that and the rec the where we are with reconciliations of the cash okay. book as well please, can can you please put that back on the agenda or in, in your updates um what your how your conversation went with them yep. and just an update on the update is that for the last 10 years um Greenfield Community College has been asking how what we see in our town is uh, areas that, and we have told them many, many times that a, a municipal accounting is sorely lacking. And when we're trying to find an accountant, we it's it, it is very difficult to find anybody that has any type of the even basic municipal accounting experience so this um fall time i guess gcc is actually putting on a municipal accounting class and right now there's 42 people signed up for it so i i mean it took it took a long time but they weren't the ones that were sleeping on it, it was somebody else that runs a uh, county-wide service Mm hmm. Hmm. May have mentioned them earlier. Go figure. Okay. So that's good. So, Jeff. Yeah, I just wanted to add that it, what I've heard and what I've seen with the the new accountant that we have so far has all been very positive. You know, he did find yeah. the the issues. Um, to him and, and the the interim accountant. That's good. Um, and speaking with staff on. The, the work that's been done over the last six months has, has all been very positive. So I did want to mention that too. Yeah, and I don't, I don't doubt that. I, I think we, Janet Flynn was a, we, we, we've had some very, 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 very good accountants from the FERCOC, but the oversight has to be consistent. And I think that's that's where it bites them. So, all right, thank you, Jeff. Crystal, Dave, any questions about the the accounting snafu? No. Okay, Crystal. All right, uh, annual town meeting review, Jeff. So, town meeting uh, was June twelfth. Um, all articles past it was about an hour and a half it wasn't nearly as hot as last year yeah. which was good it's true um yeah I, th I think that as follow-up one of the things that I, I did today was to notify the state and the pioneer valley M mosquito control district that we the town meeting did vote to join um we had to notify them and DOR and uh, our state senator and state rep. And so we, we sent that certification of vote so that they know we officially did vote to join. Um, looking forward to hearing back from them. Still waiting to hear about the 
state spring opt out that we applied for um, at the end of May. EEA has to approve our plan and, and be okay with it and to allow us to opt out. And I know that uh, Senator Comerford is, is um, working with EEA to get those notifications or at least a timeline out as soon as possible. Okay. David, any comments about town meeting? Um, I thought it was a, a little quieter than usual, but um, moved along pretty quickly and it was a, it was a good meeting. And we got lucky with the weather once again, so. Very lucky. I don't think I'd tempt that a third time in a row, you know, but hopefully we won't have to worry about that. So we'll be back to normal going forwards. But it was a good meeting. Crystal? Being the first one that I had to sit up there for, it was a learning experience. Yeah. Um, well, you were, it, you were lucky because you could actually hear. The, the running joke, if anybody's ever sat at the front table, is that you never get to hear the question. So we're all trying to, fit, when somebody asks a question of the people in the front, we've always been trying to ask, did you, did you hear the question? And, what? And, and FCAT did a remark, I don't know what they did, but they did a remarkable job where we could, we actually heard, it was the first time in a long time that I remember actually being able to hear what was said at a town meeting. So they, they, they did a wonderful job. Anything else? Any comments? Additional comments? No. Crystal was at a disadvantage. I mean, basically, well, not quite as bad as the one in, 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 in Whiteley. They had a, an election on Saturday, voted a new, sele new selectman, and Thursday he had a meeting. So at least Crystal had a little time to get some of the background in from well a little. Um, I, I I've always I've always had a it it's sometimes it's disconcerting because you're when you even if you get elected in the springtime, you're the next year you're with the budget that was created by yep. your predecessors. So I, I don't I don't know that doesn't seem to work really well because you're you're working under that budget, but whatever. I, I would say um, I, I'd like to remind everybody, um, annual town meeting um, is is a an old, very very old form um, of government. It dates back probably to the. I think it goes back to. The 1670s, where the when the pilgrims were here, um, and and you were basically mandated that you have to show up for the meetings. Now, people aren't mandated to come. Um, many don't. Um, many complain afterwards, and you try to. You, I I can't tell you how many times people after a town meeting complain about. A, the budget or something that passed and said you know you have to look how the 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 board what their recommendations were a lot of times um it may and a lot of times it's different than what the final vote that takes place and the people that show up to the meeting and vote are the people that carry it yeah. and and it's the way it is so if 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 you don't you got to participate, basically. You have to participate, and and <clears throat> I mean, and I would say if if you know, you look at your tax bill, um, and if you want if you want to say on how that those tax dollars are spent, you should probably come to town meeting because the the town meeting is the group that legislates that and how it's spent. So I I would I I I think we were prepared, and I think Crystal. One of the th things that she it was it was us trying to figure out beforehand, trying to figure out what we missed, um, and how you know what questions aren't we prepared for. Um, so we, I mean, and I, Jeff, I thought you did you did a, a, a outstanding job of getting us prepared. Um, I don't think there was questions that really. Um, took us off guard. I I think um, 
and and it's something like the mosquito group I've had four or five comments since the town meeting about that and that how they think that was a great thing that we voted for it because they don't want aerial spraying I said well let's step back um, one of the things that is important is that if if we find there's infected mosquitoes with triple E throughout the entire town of Sunderland, maybe we're going to have to do aerial spraying. Um, but if we found it just in one location, maybe we can target those different. What we promised at town meeting and at other meetings leading up to town meeting was that any decision that's made, our town will be fully. <clears throat> We'll gotta, let you know. Yeah. Got to get our plan approved too. So right, and and so, so I, I again I thought you know that and again the town clerk moderator it's their meeting they they did a wonderful job, um, and it's it's amazing how things just happen and how you know and and to me that's that's the most important that's the most amazing thing is that we get everything is set up you know everything is taken care of. And we just show up, and it's it's done. So, thank you, Jeff, and your and all the people that put all the hard work into that. Thanks, folks, for coming. Okay, old business, COVID nineteen updates, Jeff. I don't have any updates. We we said goodbye to the EMD. Uh, hopefully, goodbye. <laughs> not goodbye, yeah, but good you don't have to come to the meetings at the last meeting. And I told her to please email me any updates and. No. You know, or if she wanted to participate and she hadn't. So, uh, as far as as far as I know, there have been uh, no new cases. The state last week was the last week that they did their weekly reports. Um, so doesn't doesn't mean we're out of the woods. Doesn't mean stop being cautious. But uh, it, we're here meeting in time. person. Yep. I feel like people, uh, especially people who gotten their vaccines are, are getting more comfortable the weather is nicer so certainly hang out outside but um, vaccines are still widely available I don't think there are any nope. more clinics planned um, but pharmacies still have them available if you need a shot hospitals um, so yeah I, I think good news on that front so so Jeff if someone wanted to participate in a meeting tonight and they didn't want to come to the meeting, how would they do it? Right now, uh, we do not have a plan. I think that they can call in as um, the, Mr. Fernandez did, Officer Fernandez, Chief. Um, I think that we can set up a conference call line. We're working on a solution for hybrid meetings where we that would allow us to use Zoom so people could both watch and participate yep. remotely. Um, but we're still working on getting that set up and, and all the technology. So well. so can can you make it so that in in post a number for the telephone so that they could call in? Yes, I think I think what I might prefer to do is set up a Zoom meeting yep. and then have people call and I'll call into the Zoom meeting as well from here and that way I let's let's do that and and FCAT can figure out how to how to get the Zoom on the meetings that you know that the technical stuff yeah yeah and I'm working with them on on some so of those so things. let's let's continue with a Zoom and then you can keep a Zoom or one of us can put up the Zoom just so that we can hear okay yep all right good. Okay, select board updates. David? Uh, no updates this week. Crystal? I have no updates. Um, last week we had a South County EMS um, meeting. We are on our budget we're on, is good. Our, you know, for the end of the year, um, the budget was passed and all three towns um, we also talked about we also talked about um, the rising number of we're going back to to what looks like we're topping out around 1200 calls uh, per year um, it had 
kind of gone down a little bit because of the the original COVID thing. People did not want to take ambulances, but the numbers are the numbers are going back up. Um, so we're so we're just looking at what that means, um, and do we have to change our manning schedules and how we how we do things? So we're looking at that right now. South County Senior Center had their annual. Um, picnic that was last that was held last Wednesday over outside under the tent and um, it was very well attended and um, we're so we're, do we have a scheduled meeting yet for the uh, South County uh, senior center no senior center because we got to start talking about reopening right yes okay so we will be doing that very 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 shortly Town administrator updates. Yes, a uh, couple things. Um, the first is just a little preview of some things happening in July that I wanted to make sure the select board was okay with. Um, the meeting on the 26th, I'd like the uh, technical assistance uh, contractors for our rapid recovery planning grant to come in and present where they are in the process um, they'll talk about what they've done and their preliminary list of action items mm -hmm. uh, for discussion I thought this would be the best venue to get feedback um, both from the select board and and the wider community um, they will also be talking to the village center committee earlier in the month um, if people are interested that'll be on july 8th and then we're also working with the open space and recreation plan ad hoc committee to uh, plan for a public presentation of the draft open space and recreation plan update good so i'll let you know when those are um, the other major thing is that starting next Monday, um, paving is going to begin on North Main Street. They are hoping to wrap it up by July 2nd. Um, there is likely to be some noise. They're going to have rollers to uh, level the pavement and, and, uh, or the asphalt and roll it out. Um, they're going to be... Uh, there's going to be potential impacts on the driveways and so they we put something up on the website just informing people that the paving was going to happen um, contact information for both the contractor and mass dot and i'm working with them to try to narrow down when specific properties are going to be impacted so if they're thinking four days and you figure Okay, this quadrant day one that qu at least yeah. give people some some amount of heads up of when there might be limited access to, to their properties. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention on that is that we had a meeting on Friday with the highway superintendent and the town's arborist and the project arborist to talk about the sidewalks and given how close uh, a lot of the sidewalks are to the trees, how to accomplish the goals of the project with minimal impact to the trees. And basically what, what was discussed is we have to widen the sidewalks. They're currently about four feet to five feet. That's the ADA um, minimum width, standard minimum width. Um, and so what they're planning to do is just dig out next to the existing sidewalk about a foot um, only to the depth of the pavement not you know see what's underneath if they have to put a little bit of gravel or, or dense fill in underneath it to level it off and then pave that extra foot and overlay the existing sidewalk um, you know treating any cracks that are existing there there are um, several of the trees that were identified in the Project Arborist report that they're going to be doing air spading throughout um, that widening strip rather than going in with the excavator. And they talked with the arborist, and the arborist said, um, 
for mature trees, some amount of they're, they're going to encounter some roots. They're not allowed to cut anything over three inches in diameter. Um, and what the arborist had said was that anything smaller than that uh, is not going to significantly detriment the, the trees. And so they were okay with the arbor. And by the way, when I say the depth, they were talking four to six inches, just taking sort of the, the loam and the top layer of soil off. So the arborist didn't think it was likely that they were going to encounter any major roots. Um, so okay. that is the plan. So I, I guess my, my biggest concern, well, there's a lot of concerns. My number one is how, how is the project slash state Today's the 21st. They're planning and starting paving on the 28th. I would think they would should be starting to to talk to the residents already. They went. They said they went out today to drop off notices to residents. Okay, and and basically we're going to. They're telling residents that they may not be able to access the road from their driveways. They are saying that they would prefer if rev residents allowed the asphalt to dry to minimize um, tire tracks and make sure that the pavement lasts as, as long as possible. Well, I, I, um, I will say that I've been dis disappointed um, on how some of it's been going up to date so I, I still can't believe that they can allow the dust to occur that they are I, I, I would have I, you know I look at cars there and it looks like the car has been in a stored you know after one day it's been stored in a, uh, a, a tobacco barn for 25 years with that layer of dust on it so I, I, I and you know, there should be, I would think, some kind of signage for bicycles to get bicycles off that road and on, you know, onto side or, or direct them to, to, you know, put detour signs or something to get them off from that road because I, I don't know how they're going on that road right now. I, a matter of fact, I saw Saturday, I think it was Saturday, a bicycle heading up going north in the south lane because he thought it was safer to do so. And I said, and I stopped and I said, I would recommend that you use on the sidewalk because I, so, I mean, there, there is no signage for, I mean, there is no signage for bicycles there. Right now, I think it's, 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 it's difficult to say the least. But. And then one more unrelated to North Main, yep. unless there were other comments. Um, we have an opportunity through Representative Blay to uh, talk about or advocate for our priorities for the American Jobs Plan Act, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and we have three, that she's asking for our top three priorities. So I don't know if you want me to go through the list that I thought up. Uh, when, they when they need that by? Tomorrow. Okay, go ahead and go through it. Yeah. Um, so the early education playground at the elementary school, um, extension of the sewer system to the southern part of town, and Plum Tree Road, uh, ditch remediation, um, police cruiser, that was a capital request that wasn't funded. Um, in the public safety complex, fixing the HVAC system and installing truck bay exhaust. Yep. Yeah. Uh, back to the elementary school, air conditioning in the library, perhaps the gym as well. Um, and then uh, electric transportation van for the uh, South County Senior Center. So that was a, a long I, list. I, I, well, <laughs> if, you, if you're looking for three, what I would do is I would combine. I I would recommend that we combine the HVAC projects at the 
at the elementary school, the town off, I mean the uh, public safety and the highway. I would just, I would just, I would write them up as one. Yeah, we might have to start giving some thought, given how things have been getting hotter and hotter too, to like actually maybe, and especially with units like this, maybe I, air conditioning the whole, or like the classroom space down the road too. Well, and and uh, and and so that so that I would I would think that that would go that would cover the AC for the gymnasium, right, and also the 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 problem that we have at the public safety complex, plus the uh, exhaust for the the bay the fire fire bay, and the exhaust in the uh, highway. Exhaust on the highway. Okay. Yep. I, I would say that. I would use that. I would say that would be one. Yep. Yeah, because it's all HVAC related. Right. No. One meaning the top or not necessarily. No. But we, we, we have to identify three. Then yeah. we're going to have to define one, two, three. My, my, my top three would be an electric um, uh, transportation for seniors. Especially with our senior center coming in, I mean our senior housing coming in to get to the senior center, mm -hmm. um, I, I would think that you know we should we should see um, if that if that's practical, and along with that, the purchase of that electric vehicle would be the installation of a couple chargers. electric car chargers also because you can't have one without the other, and that's infrastructure. That. Yeah, and that's infrastructure also. Um, and the third, well, do you guys have a thought for a third? Who's our crystal? Things? David? I'm just trying to remember what, what the other. Uh, early ed playground, sewer, ditch, police cruiser. I, and, and for me, I would say if you could ditch mitigation would be a great thing. That'll be a long one. I think you have to start. You we do. have to start. Yeah. You know, and that and, and, and again, if if we had seed money to do it, Dave, you, you do you know it would help. Yeah. Right. Then then they can then you then we know what we can do. Then yeah. we go out, then we can Well that's the thing, because we need money to to figure out costs and everything that was one of the things that you know or un unless you want to look mm -hmm. at sewer extension for the south end of town well we did that engineer we had that engineering study right six million that. dollars yep that was 10 years ago or so that might be a good infra like long-term infrastructure and piece. and that that would that would play into the Redoing of infrastructure, so yep. I, I would say you could use that as number three. Yeah, that should be, and then we can still tackle the other ones on, yep. on our own. So, did I hear that one was the HVAC, two was electric, yep. three was sewer extension? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Great. How's Thank that? You. That that's the end of my updates. All right, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? David? No, I'm good. Crystal? Good. Okay. Um, Independence Day, town offices are closed on Monday, July 5th, which is fast approaching. Our next meeting is tentatively scheduled for Monday, July 12th, 2021. Um, again, I would I would encourage everyone to uh, if you have not received your vaccination yet to read as much about you read as much as possible about the uh, the vaccination. Um, ask questions, and if you can find positive and all that information, I would recommend that you get to your vaccination. And get us where I think Massachusetts is at 68 or 69 percent of our communities are 
um, vaccinated right now. So we're very close to that 70%. Um, so I, I would, I would also like to remind you that schools are closing, if not closed now. So there'll be uh, a lot more youngsters out and about during the daytime. Um, so be careful when you're when you're driving. And just a, a, a personal comment, I'd like to again, we said we did say something at the uh, town meeting, and and I I'd like to reiterate that I that the job that um, Superintendent uh, Modesto is and his team, Ben at Sunderland and his team um, that they've done over the last year has been extraordinary. They all, um, they should be commended. Um, you may not necessarily have agreed with every decision that they've made, but, they, but they've made a plan, they've stuck to the plan, um, and they've had extensive conversations. And, and in public conversations at that. And that's very, very difficult. Um, but they, they, they have stood out um, head and shoulders above a lot of contemporaries. Um, and they've been able to um, negotiate um, the troubled waters very well. So I, again, I'd like to thank them um, and the parents. Um, I don't know if I'd want to be a parent today making some of the decisions that you've all been called to make on. Um, but um, I, I, I think that the information's been put out, been discussed. The school committee's done a great job, Modesto, Ben. So if, um, Jeff, if we could put together a letter, I'd like to send them a letter and, and just express our, our gratitude for how, how they conducted business. Over, over this period of time. And uh, just let everybody know that the uh, town office building is open, right? It is. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know the uh, people in our town office have worked hard and the library is coming up with a plan for reopening. The library is open with limited hours. Uh, their first, I think, I think it's two Tuesday and Wednesdays or two days a week. Yeah. I'll say that. Yep. yep. Uh, and they're going to reassess uh, at the beginning of July if they Good. can open for it. And and and, and it's probably and on their website, I would imagine. You, you know, right? yeah. I, I will say one thing about people. Um. They're, they're it's it's interesting. You walk into a Home Depot today and and. There's some that wear masks, some that don't. Kind of depends on where you are. Some businesses. Um, I I would just remind everyone that you know we've been lucky in our area. Our our area has been very, very, very respectful of one another. And I would I would ask that we maintain that respect. You know, and if someone feels more comfortable wearing a mask, that's their choice. Um, and I would I would. I, I would just recognize it as a person's choice and just be respectful. All right. So without uh, further ado, look at that. Get you out of here again early, huh? There you go. All right. Crystal says she likes this. <laughs> I motion we adjourn. Second. We have a motion made and seconded to a adjournment. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 We have a 3-0. Please declare us out at uh, 718.